Um, so my first question was actually, you spoke about it in the last video um, by, uh, as it happens, it was related to what you mean by uh, delighting in uh, sensuality. And, but you did speak it about, about it in the last video and it was quite um, clear when you said that it's kind of in that attitude of anticipation, initial attitude of anticipation or background attitude of anticipation towards um, mm -hmm. a particular experience or something. Um, and then I think the question that I wanted to just to make sure that, um, just to clarify it, is what would be the difference between um, delighting in a sensual, a thought of sensual nature and like engaging mentally in, a, in sensuality? Is there a difference between those two things? Um, well, yes, but not like they're not on the same level. So, mm -hmm. um, if if you were not delighting, you wouldn't be able to engage mentally. Yes. So delight is the basis for mental engagement. Mm -hmm. So you can then not engage mentally, but still delight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't delight, even thinking about the sense objects, it's not sensuality because mm -hmm. there's no delight. Delighting. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's kind of what I. Mm. thought um, that the delight is more like the yeah the necessary condition for you to be able to in yeah. engage in a thought of sensual nature in the sense that to welcome um, it mm -hmm. delight in it accept that you know the, the joy the promises and so on mm -hmm. like basically to take it for granted and so then even like you know even if you're just sitting and not even moving or doing anything mm. there is a difference between having like an attitude of wanting to go towards something, welcoming yeah. it and delighting yeah. it, and then you can then even actively think. Then the, there is this active thinking about about something um, yeah. of whatever pleasant experience that you want to have or something mm. that you can like actively be thinking about it. But before that, there has to be already or prior, let's say, or kind attitude. of underlying it, there is that attitude. Yeah, which remains there, gives you, gives the meaning, gives the, the context mm -hmm. of what, what your mind is revolving around. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's why, that's why I said that people would more often than not meditate with sensuality. Mm -hmm. I mean, sutta say the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, the point is exactly that. So you might not be, you might be saying no, to the um, central objects, so you're not engaging with them, you're refusing to think about them, you're concentrating mm -hmm. away from them, you're getting rid of those thoughts, but mm -hmm. is your mind still expecting pleasure? Mm -hmm. Delight in joyful ideas of whatever, mm -hmm. meditation mm -hmm. experience, uh, and so on, and it's like, yeah, so that is that is your intention, that is your, mm. that is your intention, that is your context, that mm -hmm. is your motivation. Mm -hmm. um, so like when you sit to meditate, do you mm. sit to meditate on a kind like um, in a way of uh, discerning the enduring body there, the mm. basis, what is subjected to all mm. these reflections, or do you sit to meditate to concentrate the body to evoke, to get, to produce the experience of, of pleasing kind, mm. and then that's just uh, exactly the same central principle. Okay. Yeah. Um. That's when that sense like even people. You know, would take on the seal and the virtue, but in that kind of a conditional way. They would take it because, yes, they were told they need to take it in order to get this special experience of meditation and enlightenment. But if you're actually, if your meditation is on the level of reviewing your situation, the body, the context, the danger, the peril, the disenchantment, that it's better to give it up, then you realize, oh no, uh, seal and virtue is what protects me from falling deeper into this. It's not conditional anymore. It's indirectly for what it is. Abstaining from certain acts is what created this context of recognizing the trap, the bait, and everything else. Yeah. That brings me to another... Yeah, that's, that's exactly the other thing I wanted to uh, ask about or check. Um, is that this... Um, it seems that the danger um, in relation to 
sensuality or sen- but again I have another come back to that in a minute but or even a whole, the whole domain of the senses and um, engagement with the senses involvement with the senses um, the because there's let's say two broadly speaking aspects of danger that mm. kind of appear more or less clearly to me in at different times one of which is really in relation to the nature of this particular type of let's say you kind of you can learn to recognize a particular type of let's say perception or if if you're in seclusion there's nothing else it's more like a thought type mm. of thought that is um it's not about you know initially it will be about certain types of objects but it's more about the nature of the thought that it's like it contains an invitation or a hook or a it requires you to it wants you to do something mm-hmm. to um become involved in a particular type of sense of object or a particular type of activity or experience in some way and it's like th- th- then in relation to that there is the danger of like the mind becoming disturbed and you having to kind of hang yourself you becoming involved hang yourself on this particular object or uh, to put it like that um that you become dependent on all of this this experience getting something wanting something what will happen if I don't get it? What will mm. happen on account of it? Becoming busy on account of it, um, um, and and yeah, so that's a kind of type of of danger of see the danger of involvement or being required to do a particular thing. Um, Is there a more even more immediate type of danger implicit? Mm-hmm. That's this. There is a seems like a second aspect of danger, which is really um, more about the fact that the of the about the nature of the body as such, or the senses as such. Um, but, but that nature is there regardless of whether you're engaged with sensuality or not. Mm-hmm. So what's dangerous about it in one case and why it isn't dangerous in another case? Yes, because the reason why... Yeah, because if... Um, if you can kind of, let's say... You see, you start to recognize that regardless of... Well, let's say like this. Where does the pain Mm -hmm. come from? Suffering. What's the origin Mm -hmm. of suffering? The craving. The craving, Mm -hmm. yeah. And what is the... Where does that craving exist? Is it a physical thing? No, it's an in your attitude towards So it's a mental. It's a mental thing. Mm -hmm. Is the mental craving, which uh, mm-hmm. any craving is mental, so is the craving uh, a matter of choice? Can no. you choose to crave no. or choose not to no. crave? So craving is something the mind does, mm-hmm. which means suffering is something the mind causes. Uh, is the mind something you ask for, something you can control, something you can um, own, no. something that obeys you? No. Kind of, you're aligned with it, so mm-hmm. to speak. It obeys you most of the time, if the mm-hmm. circumstances are all right. Mm-hmm. But if circumstances change, that's when you realize, you know, that mind doesn't actually want to listen to you. Mm-hmm. You can't stop it. And then you suffer on account of it. So then, you want to be free from suffering, means you need to be free from craving. Which means, you need to teach your mind how to stop doing it. Or you need to basically understand your mind or surmount your mind either way mind does the craving um, so how do you then stop that and uh, that's where the danger is uh, the danger of sensuality is the danger of still the slight doesn't matter the little mm-hmm. bit of sensuality means 
there is still a little possibility of that mind craving against you, against mm. itself, resisting, patiga, against anything that, that, and you can't control that. So you cannot, you can have wishful thinking and mm. hope that the mind won't, because you know, you're so calm and you've been keeping precepts for so long. Fundamentally, for as long as there is a trace of sensuality, the other backside of that same trace, mm. same phenomena, same values of sensuality, is the value of the wild mind, which means the craving remains there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if you want to see whether your mind still has that uncontrollable mm. threat that would turn against itself and cause you immense suffering, mm. if, if circumstances change, if you lose health, life and so on, uh, yeah, just practice sense restraint and solitude and you'll see. When the mind doesn't get what it wants, it's going to start getting wound up. And then you will recognize that oh, that's the root of the suffering. It's the craving. So I can't stop the craving. I can't will it away. I can't, I can't just choose it. Mm. But what I, I can do is tame the mind so it becomes unable to turn against itself. And, uh, and that's where you recognize the true danger of sensuality. So giving in to sensual desire, even on the mental level, valuing it, means allowing mind to remain wild to that extent Mm -hmm. and sooner or later that will bite you back Mm -hmm. so it's not a what i'm trying to say it's not a delayed danger Mm -hmm. it's the other side of the same coin okay that's that when when Mm -hmm. danger becomes apparent means this um as we said this anticipation this delight literally this thing while it is present the background of it is mind eating itself Mm -hmm the possibility of it. Mm -hmm. Won't do it there, but the fact is you're allowing it, and if you go that way, to that extent, you gave your own Mm. mind room to turn against itself. Mm. And then it will. Sooner or later it will, as long as you don't abandon that attitude and that anticipation, Mm. and you don't see thoroughly the the, the peril of giving in to that direction. Once you do, and as the Buddha said, you dry up from sensuality internally, Mm. then the mind, the animal, will be completely tamed. It will forget how to turn against itself. Mm. And that's where you recognize that, okay, so now suffering cannot arise. Even if the circumstances are completely falling apart around me, everything disintegrating. What cannot happen is mind turn against itself. Because you tame it. But you won't tame it for as long as there is, as long as you allow it to eat Mm. the bait, or welcome the bait, or delight in the bait, or think about the bait. Mm -hmm. And the bait you refer to is basically prospect of pleasure. Sure. Yeah. Like and, value, and value of pleasure, delight in pleasure, prospect of pleasure. Um, so the bait is also, like, it's not prospect of pleasure can show the bait, but it also uh, simply kind of not seeing the danger enough. Mm-hmm. That's also what the bait is. That's all it means. You're very pleasure. They're not recognizing the bait in a way. Seeing the danger is how you basically stop valuing the pleasure and recognize the bait. The bait is the bait. Yeah, the bait mm-hmm. is the bait. So, it's not what I'm trying to say. It's not like that you then need to actively seek out and then, oh, I don't actively seek out, thus I'm free from bait. No. Yeah. Do you now, by, okay, you don't actively seek out, but do you now see the danger if, if you were to seek out? And if you don't see the danger to that extent, yeah, you still don't see the bait. Delight. You don't see the bait. If mm-hmm. you don't see the and danger. Yeah, exactly. And when the bait or when this prospect is seen as the bait as something that will hook me then delight um, decreases well no when the prospect of that um, anticipation is seen this thing is what makes mind bite itself exactly that's what I yeah. meant yeah that's when you talk there's nothing no pleasure in the world that yeah. you want accept it because mm-hmm. it's not the, it's that like thing it's nothing to do with the thing you it, want nothing no. No, it's, it's that it's like giving into mm-hmm. that or maintaining that or not mm-hmm. seeing the danger of that and perpetuates mm-hmm. um, enables the mind and it perpetuates that enabling of mind to bite itself. Yeah. When things change, when you're paired with what you don't want, mm. separated from what you want, the you know, the five codes of sensual pleasures mm. and so on, you and you know that. You know mm. that you, you will not be able to stop it. You can just hope and ignore it. But factually, if there is a room for a mind to bite itself, it will. Because you allowed it. And that's the danger. Mm-hmm. So yes, you can think about all the future peril and dissatisfaction, sure to rein it in, but fundamentally 
accepting this means mind biting itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that's exactly what I <laughs> what I meant. Like that. that that's that's it's so nice to um, it matches. <laughs> um, yeah, like the, the the danger is in that any kind of. Um, that's what you just said. So I don't need to repeat it. But like that—that the that—that is the danger. It's nothing mm. to do with like what will happen in the yeah. future or what could yeah. happen in the future or whatever. Because, yeah, that's like oh, you could it could not happen or it could be fine, whatever. Like, but it's it's just that fact of being hooked one of like having this, um, yeah, having a hook, having a push, having a. Having any kind of craving is in itself to be not desired, to be mm. not welcomed, because it's the way, it's like the gateway toward to hell, really. Yeah. Like it, it, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this great mass of suffering, as the Buddha mm-hmm. described. Yeah, that, that's that the craving, gateway to That's it. That's because of that, the great mass of suffering, and the great mass of suffering is always on account of the same the cause, same presence core. of craving. Yeah, that is. Everything else is second to it. Mm-hmm. And as we described, presence of craving, craving, full stop, is something that the mind that hasn't been tamed will do mm-hmm. when faced with agreeable, disagreeable, or neutral. Mm-hmm. Which means the great mass of suffering remains something that you are under. So you are liable to it, you will be subjected to it. But if the, the danger of sensuality has been understood, mm-hmm. i.e., oh, okay, mm-hmm. so... Without, if I stop, if I don't give into this, if I don't welcome this, mm-hmm. because now I see, if I do, this is the result. Mm-hmm. The result is mind remaining able to eat itself mm-hmm. if it wants to mm-hmm. in a split second. Mm-hmm. Not like you know, it will not be a long process. All you need yeah, to do yeah. is face with something you don't want to face with, and all the dread and pain and everything will be instantaneously there because the mind will just try to turn away from it to resist it. Because again, you let it, you you gave it room to do so. Mm-hmm. So, and that's why it's 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 hard to see because you know room to do so doesn't mm-hmm. mean the mind is doing it all the time. Mm-hmm. So you then forget that the mind can still do it. Mm-hmm. It can still turn against itself. It can still want to deny its own existence out of pain and aversion and hatred and, and ill will and so on. Mm-hmm. But because it's not doing that all the time, you sort of forget mm-hmm. that there is room for it to still turn around and sink its teeth mm-hmm. yeah so that's the danger yeah and that was something um that was another point that that's why like it's not um being like um having a kind of a sense of safety or something is not about um, just currently not feeling any sort of pressure mm. of, of the sensual mm. kind mm. because you can have that even like for quite a long time for example sure um, but as soon as something comes up something arises there's some then if, if at that moment then you will be like going in that direction not able to <clears throat> see the problem in it not recognizing it for what it is mm. then there is no safety mm. really at all so it's yeah. it's the but if so what is the safety then the true safety and the safety is when you know where the danger is then you know that no matter when it will so you know now arise. that the danger is in mind being able to mm-hmm. turn against itself mm-hmm. so what is then the safety um well if you see the danger of that then the well, if the mind is able to turn itself against itself, what makes the mind being able to turn itself against itself? Mm-hmm. That's something that you are responsible for, mm-hmm. that you can mm-hmm. choose to not do. Mm-hmm. So if you recognize the danger of uh, doing that which makes the mind able to turn against itself, then yeah. you can not do that. Yeah, and then and eventually then, the mind will cease to be able to turn against itself. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then that's, that's, that's like true safety. safety. Yeah. You can't yeah. suffer. Mm-hmm. Craving cannot arise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you said that now, like, recognizing where the danger is, is the necessary condition for um, safety. Hmm. And then is there, but is there, yeah, is there also a sense that the kind of, um, I think it's something slightly different. 
from like let's say from the perspective of um, not being <laughs> not having any safety there's if you're if you're still like in the domain of of sensuality and kind of um, involved in it I kind of don't see how it's possible in a way to see the danger in it mm. in, in a, it kind of requires at least say maybe not the complete sense of safety but at least a pretty complete seclusion from that yeah. domain in yeah. order to then have the perspective yeah, that's like of sense restraint and guarding mm-hmm. with the sense those is a prerequisite that's not mm-hmm. really optional yeah it needs to be your lifestyle your mode of, mode of being mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah of course mm-hmm. in itself you will still not see mm-hmm. um, where the danger is and so on but for sure if you if you're not withdrawn then mm-hmm. you remove even possibility of seeing mm-hmm. it <clears throat> it's like we said before like lighting the fire mm-hmm. so the Buddha said you know the sticks are in the water wet <clears throat> you take them out of the water first like if you try to light the fire with the, with the, with sticks in the water that's just not going to work mm-hmm. so you take them out but they're still wet so although yes they are out of water they're still wet so they still won't light the fire but now at least there's a possibility of them drying if you don't put them back in the water mm-hmm. and once they dry thoroughly then you can light the fire mm-hmm. and that's it the mind is first physically withdrawn from sensuality through, through your own behavior, you withdraw it by not giving into this behavior because you recognize on it. No, like our faith to a degree, but at the same time, you do recognize I've been going down the direction of the senses my whole life, and uh, look, I want to practice, I want to be free from suffering because this is what it resulted in. Mm. So then you found the Buddhist teaching, you have a degree of faith, you start applying it, and you can even intellectually make sense that actually it's better if I'm out of the water even if I don't necessarily see the immediate imminent danger the direct insight into freedom from sensuality and so on well at least I have possibility to do so if I stay out of the water mm. yeah mm. and like that but in and of itself mm-hmm. that's not a goal yeah yeah exactly the goal is to light mm-hmm. fire mm-hmm. and you don't forget mm-hmm. that yeah um, and again just to clarify slightly further that being out of the water because this could maybe be understood in different ways um, as far as I can see it really has to become quite a complete seclusion as in it wouldn't really be because yeah you can be kind of um, more or less um, restrained and keeping the virtue but if you are still like busy um, doing various things and mm. um, kind yourself. of distracting yourself in any way, really, then you kind of can't really even see this the the which type of who yeah is, is yeah. But well, that's like you know seeing the danger mm-hmm. in the slightest fault does not mm-hmm. mean seeing the danger in the mm-hmm. slightest uh, yeah. fault of the letter and the the the, the mm-hmm. semantics of the rule. Mm-hmm means the danger of uh, the slightest fault in terms of okay so yes i'm not breaking this i'm not giving into desire by body but to this coarse extent but am i still looking forward to and eating things that are allowable as we said before yeah, yeah. oh so i must stop no you must stop eating with that desire you can't stop eating that's mm-hmm. the point but if a person never recognizes that that's where the true danger and and um, fault is and still remain on the level of you know Oh, I studied all the dictionary and I got the definition of the rule and this is what objectively means. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and our fault of that interpre- in regard to that interpretation is what I did in fault. Mm-hmm. So I just need to fix the circumstances and make everybody else obey it. That's not seeing the fault. That's not allowing mm-hmm. basically Vinaya and sense restraint to make you practice on the level of the mind. That is just using it to protect yourself through that magical belief that that's where the purity is. Mm-hmm. So... In order to abandon Silva the Paramahansa, you need to recognize where the fault is. Mm-hmm. And it's not in the letter, it's not in the, in the definition, it's in like, why am I doing this? So, you find something that's not against the rules, but that still doesn't absolve you from needing to know and feel the weight of why you're doing it. Yes, coffee is allowable to have in the afternoon, and I can have sugar, but mm-hmm. why? Why am I doing this? Where is this rooted? Oh yeah, it's been, you know, it's been traditionally offered, mm-hmm. touched, you know, with the bowing, triple bowing on a tray. Mm-hmm. So it's just the purest offering I can imagine in that external form sense. But yeah, but that's, 
That's irrelevant. The fault is not in how it was done and presented. The fault is, why am I doing this? Mm. Do I need it? What for? Where is this rooted? And then same would come to exactly like, oh yeah, so you know, we are allowed to, to, to work and do these things. Mm. And like, but yeah, but why? Yeah, whatever. It's like even stu- you know, is you it can necessary? Be alone? Where did it, where did it, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, well, same study. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Study to, why am I reading the suttas? Mm-hmm. Why these duties that you perceive are kind of self-evident and objectively valid? That's not where the the, uh, the validity is determined. Mm. It's determined by your intentions and the reasons why you do it. Mm. So yes, obvious things out of greed, aversion, delusion, eight precepts basically are not to be broken. Mm-hmm. But now all the other implementation doesn't mean you can dismiss them. Quite the opposite. It means you need to take more of them just on the right level. Mm-hmm. Less specifically, but more. Because you're taking responsibility for where the actual mm-hmm. fault is. Mm-hmm. The mind of desire, mind of aversion, and mind of distraction. But if we judge what needs to be done on the basis of authority, of the texts, which is again a contradiction in terms, mm-hmm. like you will always have your interpretation of it. There is no such thing as objective meaning of the text. It's what it means to you and to us. And vast majority of people might agree upon the meaning, but every single one of them is individually subjectively responsible for that meaning. Um, so the weight of the tradition, the authority, and so on, that's not, that's not where these things are. But if you never abandon that out of fear, of doubt, and so on, well, you never allow your mind to recognize where the true fault is and thus uproot it out of fear and doubt. Yeah. So that's when, like, you need to get out of the water for the sake of drying the sticks, mm-hmm. not for the sake of drying out the water and then just, you know, defining what the water was and how you dry and, you know, what you must, what you can, what you cannot do. From the point of view of desire, you can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not out of water, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And it's if you, if the light in the fire is your goal, if not, you know, mm-hmm. if just uh, living in a spiritual community of, that agrees upon certain terms and interpretations is your goal, then fine. Mm-hmm. But that's not what we're talking about. Um, so just to come back to this, the degree of let's say, the degree of seclusion. Um, and it's, I think in the suttas it sometimes even says like, phys- he uh, su- goes into physical seclusion and mental seclusion, physical or physical withdrawal and mental, mm. mentally secluded, yeah. um, or mentally withdrawn. And can you be mentally withdrawn then, if you're not physically withdrawn? No, you yeah. cannot. So there's the physical sense of withdrawal, but even um, there. It needs more than like physically being secluded, let's say in a secluded environment, or just being restrained. Mm. There is necessity for mental to be mentally withdrawn from um, even mentally engaging in unwholesome things, for which you need to be able to already see how you are mentally engaging with unwholesome things in order to then be able to see the danger in doing so Mm. in order to then kind of have any kind of sense of safety. So in other words, you need to basically want to light the fire. Mm -hmm. And in order to do so, you need to abandon things, external things, um, avoidance of responsibilities, external authorities, external agreements as the measure of your safety, purity, practice and defining what you need to do. You need to abandon your perceived sense of duty. So you need to abandon Silabhat Paramas, basically. That's used. You know, these fetters, and these are just random things. They serve purpose. You're fettered willingly by them because they protect you from that which is very displeasing. The weight of responsibility, the weight of interpretation, the weight of choices, and so on. So which you, you have a choice to make. You can remain sheltered, covering things up. And if you want to uncover it, then you have to unshelter it. Mm. That's what I mean. Like, the true safety comes from mind being unable to turn against itself. But in order to arrive there, mm-hmm. you need to stop covering up the fact that the mind can turn against itself. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I'm fine, you know, I keep the mm-hmm. precepts and I'm pure and I'm devotional and stuff. It's like, yeah, but that's, that's all just conditional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, that's nice in a worldly sense. 
Um, but then you need to start asking yourself, why? Why am I doing this? If if I t- took, oh no, I agree with this with this authority, with this traditional interpretation or whatever else, the way what we should do, fine. But you still need to know why, and take responsibility for it. It's never on them. It's never on others. It's never on the, as I said, on the, on the external world. Even if you say, yeah, I, I'll agree to what you already agreed, that still doesn't absolve me from needing to know why I'm doing that and think for myself and take responsibility for it. Mm-hmm. But often that's exactly why it's done. Mm-hmm. See, I will go with majority, with the tradition, with the established ways, so I don't have to think for myself. But you are thinking for yourself, now you're just lying to yourself about it. Because how would you choose to go with the tradition, with the established ways, unless you thought about it? And obviously felt some safety on account of it and gave into it. Mm-hmm. And now you're just saying, I'm like, no, I just go what I do what others say. So you do need to take responsibility for it, and then it ceases to be on that level. And then you realize it's all, it is all interpretation. Eight precepts are interpretation. Like, yeah, you know, you can bend them this way, bend them that way, sure, but fundamentally you realize, okay, you could extrapolate the principle of greed, aversion, delusion, sensual desire, ill will, uh, carelessness, distraction. That is what needs to be restrained. How we define it, and can I touch this, and if it's touched, can I do this, and well, you know, if I said it, okay, you can go into these details if it's helpful, but not for the sake of deriving safety from the definition that you read in a book or that senior monk told you, but simply from knowing more how to recognize the root of the problem in your mind so that the greed, aversion, delusion doesn't hide from you or that you don't feel absolved from it. So when I recognize that there is nothing I, nothing at all I have to do, or nothing at all that I can do that can well, that absolve be... me from taking responsibility for whatever I choose to do. Yeah. Or and also, so that basically furthermore, on a more immediate level, it will be, if you abandon Silabhata Paramasa, it will be like, oh, I don't need to do anything in order to be safe. Mm-hmm. And thus I'm safe. Mm-hmm. So the relief of abandoning the fetters, it's factual. It's not intellectual. Mm-hmm. And it's on the, exactly on that level. See, it is a burden. Having to define, having to follow, having to update, having to comply, having to do, having to perform. All of that is a factual burden. You don't see the burden in aspect because you emphasize the sheltering aspect. Mm-hmm. Once you stop shel- sh- uh, emphasizing that aspect, you can actually eventually, if you go in the right direction, abandon the burden of it. And it is, no, 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 quite the opposite. If I don't engage that way, I, I remain safe. I remain unexposed. So in a way, it's on account of the loss of perspective. I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Like you say that you you pay more attention in a way to the sheltering aspect but not to how it affects you. Right. Well, I wouldn't way. say it's on account of loss of perspective because you never had the perspective. Or like ignoring. Mm-hmm. Like you start by not having perspective. Mm-hmm. So it's on account of the lack of perspective. Mm-hmm. Loss would imply you sort of had it and then you lost it. But no, you start already fettered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's why it's like the the in a way that like Silabata Paramaso, for example, kind of covers up. That's what it does. It's what its purpose is really is to um, make something appear comfortable uh, or feel comfortable that isn't comfortable and that shouldn't be comfortable. And as in this, what do you mean? Because the avoiding responsibility um, for things through having things, duties and others, depending on other things right, to right, tell right, you, right. it kind of makes this... Um, yeah, makes it, makes it comfortable. comfortable. I see what you mean. Yeah, it makes it doable, mm-hmm. but actually you, nothing has changed on a fundamental mm-hmm. level. No, There's no fire. They, you're not closer mm-hmm. to lighting the fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you shouldn't be comfortable. Mm-hmm. You should recognize that there is still plenty of room for mind to turn against itself in many different ways. But yeah, you will feel absolved from needing to deal with it because, you know, abide under the the collective responsibility of majority that we all contributed and all partake and I'm safe. Mm-hmm. Safety of the group. Mm-hmm. Safety of the tribe. 
Mm. It's kind of gone off in a different... Slightly different direction. Now I wanted to come back to the... Um, um, if it's okay, we're kind of going in different directions, but it's, I wanted to come back to the hindrances um, because another question I had, like I, I was, because I, I often, I realized basically that often I would, um, sometimes it's not that clear to me even what um, exactly is meant by a uh, say sensual thought or a, a like a yeah because sometimes um i often i'm kind of i think of it in terms of um not necessarily defined by particular yeah particular objects or having even something necessarily being agreeable in a way what i, re I realized that sometimes things that i was thinking of as like um yeah sensuality um because it really pertains to like engaging in a some kind of experience or feeling like the need to do something really mm. um but it, it's not really it would kind of come down to i realize oh that's more like doubt or that's more like kind of a, another sure. one of the hindrances or well, they it's do more share like the same, the same kind of the same yeah, the, yeah. The thread of hindrances is, mm -hmm. uh, so they're bound together mm -hmm. so it can be on the level of specific sight sound smell taste touch mm -hmm. or like the overall uh, agreeability of the of you know the experience mm. but uh, it does always imply that that sense of pleasure which is considered safe friendly mm. agreeable to me that's when the sutta the Buddha talks about perfect celibacy it starts by yeah not having sexual intercourse uh, well he was talking to monks so not having sexual intercourse with women they're not touching them mm. they're not allowing to be touched they're not um, talking to them, they're not listening to them talk, they're not looking at them, they're not thinking about them, then not wishing about heavenly rivers. Mm. So it was the extension of the same principle. So, mm. okay, I might have abandoned any kind of physical, carnal, all these pleasures that would be binding me here, oh, but I still hope that this, I will find somewhere else here, some new mm. here, where it will be nice and pleasant and, and safe for me, where pleasures will be accessible. Mm. So, in other words, uh, are you still valuing a situation external to your state of mind here and now? Mm. That for will pleasure, provide for agreeability safety. and pleasure. There is a threat of sensuality. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when, like, if mm. same, like, whether it's meditation or any other, mm. if, if you're expecting this thing to come on the level of just this external experience that just happened internally now and everything else, mm -hmm. it's the it's, it's the, the same, same principle. Yeah. 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 And what so kind of you might you, mm. like, sorry, like mm -hmm. you know you can't, you cannot necessarily tell your mind to immediately stop thinking mm. about those things, but you can certainly not lose perspective or learn how to not lose mm. perspective on account of having those thoughts present. Mm. Yeah, and the thing this. And say, what would be the perspective, by the way? Let's say, how would you mm. not lose a perspective mm. on a spectrum of sexual intercourse with a you know whoever I'm attracted okay. to? up to the level of wishing heavenly rebirths and safety of heavens. What is the, the how would you maintain perspective for the, at any part of that spectrum, any thought, whatever it is, what would maintain the perspective of the entire thing, of the entire domain? What would maintain the perspective of yeah. the... What would make you not lose perspective? Whether it's a coarse, mm. carnal, central okay. desire, well, or it's heavenly Well, it's be recognizing that danger of that whole, exactly. uh, that exactly. you said. It's the but same danger. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the same danger. So, yes, whether it's heavens, mm -hmm. you know, it's better, mm -hmm. actually, sure. If you have a desire towards heavens, then having a desire towards carnal pleasures here and now, which are far worse, with mm -hmm. far worse consequences, mm -hmm. unintended consequences. But fundamentally, if you want to be free from it all, fundamentally, if you don't want to leave the slightest room for your mind to turn against itself, even in hundred million eons of time in the future, it's see the same danger. Mm -hmm. And then there will be no room for mind. Yeah. And then the craving will truly be abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, yeah. 
Because if the danger is seen there, then it really doesn't it matter doesn't. at all it whether it, like there is no kind of even asking. Oh, but it's little or it's big or it's small or no, no, whatever. No. Like in whatever way, in whatever matter, domain, yeah. Yeah. in whatever shape, whatever. It's not about. It's no. like. And and the thing is as well. And that's what Buddha would describe in the suttas. You know, we talk about the aggregates and how it's endangering them. Similarly, we said it doesn't matter mm. whether it's. Uh, past, future, present, big, small, personal, impersonal, um, foreign, familiar, uh, nice, light, heavy, it doesn't matter the property of it, mm-hmm. the danger is seen the same. Mm-hmm. Not mine, not to be welcomed, not to be delighted in. Mm. And see that long enough mm. and the mind will come down. Mm-hmm. In other words, the mind will become unable to turn against itself. Mm-hmm. Gone. Cannot be done anymore. And that's like the description of the true freedom, the true safety, it cannot be uh, reverted back. Mm -hmm. Like a stone split into Mm -hmm. leaves, sort of dried up, it cannot now go back. So it has been completely dry, fire has been lit, sticks were burned, gone. There are no more sticks to be wet. But then from from the perspective of valuing pleasure, that's exactly where the safety is seen. That's exactly what is seen as safe, basically. What is leads, what is dangerous. So like the bait, sure, sure. The, yeah, yeah. the prospect of oh, let me get this, yeah, and let me have it. That's my safety. That's exactly. my safety. Because I, I enjoy the the comfort, the familiarity, mm-hmm. the friendliness mm-hmm. of the taste that mm-hmm. the bait has. And, and as we said last time, it's not. It does not start when I act. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It starts when I already mm-hmm. with the light. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're already you're already not seeing it as dangerous. Mm-hmm. That's where it starts. That's, exactly. that's where it exactly is. what the. Yeah, why that's even the danger is in the delight in it yeah, towards it. Yeah, you know, that's the that's gratification, exactly, that's, that's the danger, danger it's on that level. It's, yeah, yeah. it's all on that in that same kernel. Uh, it's the same phenomenon, mm-hmm. just different aspects of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. why it keeps is the same thing in a way. Yeah. So yeah, the, like if you were to not act out of the delight long mm-hmm. enough mm-hmm. and get to discern the background, not ignore it, mm-hmm. you would see that the background of it is the, the bait. The delight is the bait. Exactly. The that's, bait is the danger, yeah, the delight is, is the danger. The danger. Exactly, yeah, 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 that's really... And all the future consequences, it's all because of this. This is the framework, this is the necessary basis, mm-hmm. this will be there if those consequences are ever to experience. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, and it's, and like, f- from the perspective of seeing that, then like the slightest, you know, prospect of you know going towards that going in that direction is very unpleasant actually or mm. it would be very unpleasant is it's like it's almost like you know you're out of prison and sure. and now you see like the prison guard is going oh no, come back in here yeah. i have some very nice yeah. um yeah. i don't know cake see but the fear <laughs> would be on the level of oh this crazy mind might forget and go back yeah mm-hmm. yeah like, you know you wouldn't, but if the mind but is the still mind not tamed, if it still has room to move, you realize, mm. oh, that's the danger. Yeah. And there was the simile of the, the what was it, the charcoal pit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man initially goes willingly there and burns himself mm-hmm. with the embers because he perceives it pleasant. Then he gets cured, he doesn't have a need to that. And if somebody were to pick him up and carry him there, wouldn't he kick and scream and yeah. want to be everywhere else except there? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you and you really can see, like, God... You know why would anybody want to yes. like actually go f- in that direction when but you do that's what i kind of meant in a way for that you do already need the perspective yeah, of, yeah, yeah, of, of course, safe of course, like some yeah. kind of safety you yeah. can't have that um, kind yeah. of perspective from already being in it and seeing right. that as the safety yeah you want to have like you mm-hmm. know seeing that principle mm-hmm. will be done on different levels like mm-hmm. different layers you'll be mm-hmm. peeling it more and more but yeah it will be the same thing up, but up, up until to the point you realize that if I were to die this next second, will my mind have aversion mm. towards that? Mm. Will it try to sort of, you know, mm. resist it, mm. uh, fight it, deal with it, avoid mm. it, close its eyes, mm. look away? Mm. If so, or if I'm not sure, means there is still room for it to move, yeah. uh, mm. to bite itself. Mm. So that cannot, should not be allowed if mm. I want to be truly free, secured from bondage. Mm. 